Hey YouTube, uh, back with another video. This week I'm going to talk about four reasons why learning probably isn't as easy as you think. So firstly, well, people are really bad at knowing what they do and what they don't know. I don't mean they're bad at knowing things that they've never learned, I'm saying they're bad at judging how good their understanding is on a certain topic. And this is a really serious problem. As Confucius put it, True wisdom is knowing what you don't know. Or as Mark Twain put it, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so. Now, I don't know if that's actually how Mark Twain talked, but we're gonna go with that. If you're in school and you do a test and you get a grade that's way off the mark of what you thought you were going to get, before you go and complain, you should really sit down and ask yourself, was it the test that failed to judge how well you knew the topic? or was it yourself that failed to judge how well you knew the topic? It's a valuable question. So that leads us directly into point number two, which is the illusion of mastery. So maybe you used to study this way or you had a friend study this way, but I'm sure you've heard of this method where you take your textbook and you're trying to learn, say it's microbiology, and you're going through the textbook and as you read through it more and more, you, you highlight parts that you think are very interesting and maybe very important key points. You highlight them in blues and reds and fuchsias and magenta orange and a dozen different colors. And then you read through and you keep doing that again and again. And when it comes time for the test, uh, you realize you don't know any of the material, even though you felt like you were very comfortable with the text. Now this is called the illusion of mastery because you feel like you know it, but you actually don't. The reason this is possible is because if you're just reading through material and reviewing material without actually thinking critically about the material, you will learn little or nothing about the actual material because your brain doesn't actually learn stuff if it's not being challenged to learn it. These sorts of methods seem very effective because as we read through the textbook, we find words like ribosome and nucleic acid and they seem more familiar to us. So it feels like we've learned what they mean and it feels like this textbook, oh, it's, it was the first time I read it, it took me 12 hours and the second time it only took me six hours. Uh, well, that's not necessarily because you've learned the material, but it could be because you're more familiar with how the words look. Now, you might not actually know what ribonucleic acid is and ribosomes are and how they uh, are important in biology or what they do in terms of life in a cell. You might not know any of that, but the words look more familiar. Along that logic, you could take a book that's in a language you don't understand and read through it and highlight things you think look cool and over time your brain will recognize how those words look but it won't actually know what they mean. So you'll get the illusion of mastery where this foreign language becomes easier to read through but your brain isn't actually capable of understanding the meaning of those messages. So basically, if you're not struggling with the material, you're doing it wrong. Number three, Rote memorization isn't actually learning. I mean, it sort of is learning, but it's the lowest ranking of learning. According to Bloom's taxonomy, knowledge or the ability to recall facts and numbers and figures and dates and names, that's the lowest rank of learning. In order to actually learn something, you need to be able to put it into your own words, to evaluate it, to analyze it, to synthesize it, to see how it fits into a greater context. And that is what actual learning means. Number four, some of the most hated teachers are actually the most effective teachers. I'm not talking about teachers that didn't show up to class or that swore their kids. I'm talking about teachers that maybe seemed to jump all over the place and they had a bit of an unusual style that was sometimes hard to follow. The kinds of teachers that really challenged you and it was like, man, I have to study for this class like 12 times more than the other classes and like she marks me so hard and there's like tests all the time. I don't know why I went valley girl there just now, but those are some of the most effective teachers. As I mentioned in point number one, we're really bad at judging how well we know something. We're also bad at judging how effective a certain teaching strategy is. That's why we have science 
Now that we can objectively quantify how well one method of teaching works compared to another, we can compare that objectivity to how well we feel that we're learning something. So we can actually look now, and we found that there's a lot of very effective teaching methods that students think suck when science tells us that those are some of the best methods. So some teachers that seem to be the worst are actually the best, and we're bad at judging that. While those teachers that, wow, their class was really fun and you just kind of winged through it and it was no problem, well, that's because you probably weren't learning much in it. I told you a bunch of things that you're probably doing wrong and ways that you're failing at learning and now I'm just gonna leave you, yeah. Next week I'm going to make a video about the science of learning, about effective methods of learning and study methods and so on. I just finished reading this book called Make It Stick. It's pretty cool. Uh, if you don't want to wait till the next video, you can check out that book. I highly recommend it. It might change the way you look at learning. I know it did for me. So stay tuned for next Thursday where I'll be releasing that video. And in the meantime, if you're looking for something to do, read the book like the video, subscribe to the channel at youtube.com slash scope of science, or you can watch an older video I made about the chicken versus the egg debate. I'll be back next Thursday with more about the science of learning.